Minnesota is in the news yet again for a lot of good reasons. What up, folks? Once again, it is indeed your boy Tim with another ride-sharing video. We've been talking about Minnesota a lot because the drivers down there continue to fight the good fight to get a lot of the lackluster wages and shit that we deal with as rideshare drivers undone in that state. So we're going to bring an article to you that I kind of want to celebrate because they're continuing to kick ass in that state. Now, many of you know the city of Minneapolis fought off the mayor in that town, uh, Mayor Fry, that was continuing to side with the rideshare companies and refused to give drivers a decent wage. The drivers banded together, got the lower level politicians to pass veto-proof legislation to give drivers what they need. We're talking about a dollar forty cents a mile. I believe the numbers were fifty-one cents per minute. Eighty percent of the fees go to the driver. Minimum five dollars per trip. But now it's at the state level because that only applied to Minneapolis, the largest city in Minnesota. But the entire state is fighting to get lackluster wages reversed for drivers. So all over Minnesota could be a good place to drive. But check this out. Senator Omar Fatai, Democrat out of Minneapolis, on Tuesday proposed minimum wage rates of $1.39 per mile and $0.49 cents per minute for Uber and Lyft drivers as part of a larger package of labor relations on the two tech giants. Now, the the Somali population is where a lot of this shit's coming from. There's a hell of a lot of Somali American uh, immigrants in the Minnesota, just in the state of Minnesota entirely, but particularly in the Minneapolis area. And they're all teaming together and fighting back. They're showing up to council meetings. They're getting shit done. That's the problem that all of us rideshare drivers have dealt with since the very beginning is that there's very little unity in this business among drivers. Minneapolis is an example of what can happen if folks band together. Now, as I mentioned, Omar Fatah, he's also a Somali American. So he's in the Senate and he is kicking ass in favor of the drivers, which also there is a large Somali population among rideshare drivers in Minnesota as well. So they really kicking ass. But I want you to hear the actual numbers again, because there's something concerning. You keep hearing minimum wage in reference to getting the rates up. Listen to this. Drivers in the Twin Cities area who earn $30.27 per hour on average before tips and expenses in 2022 would see a 10% increase under rates proposed in the state report. Now, what they're doing is playing games with the language. They're trying to suggest that drivers in Minneapolis that are averaging $30 and some odd cent per hour are going to see a 10% increase. So they're saying that, listen, this this raise is too damn high because look, you, here's a driver making 30 bucks an hour and under these numbers, he's going to make a 10% increase. Why is that playing games with the numbers? Because nobody's making $30 an, average on, $30 an hour on average in Minnesota. There are very few drivers doing that. If that was the norm, you think we'd have all this shit happening? You think there would be so many protests if most drivers, the majority of drivers in Minneapolis, in the state of Minnesota, were averaging 30 bucks an hour. Now, there are some that are probably making these type numbers, but very, very few. If folks were making $30.27 per hour, you wouldn't have these protests. That's the shit we used to earn. And nobody was crying about it. Nobody was protesting back in those days. Now, when they're, what they're not telling you is that they're taking the highest, highest earners of drivers to try to make a point. They're not going to tell you about the driver that's out here that ain't making shit or the one that's making eight or nine bucks an hour. They're going to pick out the guy who's making $30 an hour and then say, well, he doesn't deserve a 10% raise. I get it. If you're earning $30 per hour, you're doing all right. I don't think you need to be fighting for raises as a rideshare driver, but that's not the norm. 
That's not the norm by any means in the overwhelming majority of markets around the world. Drivers are not averaging no damn $30.27 an hour in 2024. So that's just playing games with the numbers. But this is what I meant when you keep hearing folks suggesting that, you know, the minimum wage driver's fares need to be raised up to equal the minimum wage. Why should rideshare drivers be operating for the minimum wage to begin with? Can you really afford a decent vehicle with a minimum wage salary? Minimum wage and rideshare drivers should not even be in the same sentence. You should earn more than minimum wage as a rideshare driver. But make no mistake about it, that is what Uber and Lyft are bitching about with Minnesota, is that their proposed numbers are above minimum wage. Why is that even coming up? You're taking on risk. Drivers are getting carjacked, robbed and shit at random all over the damn country. You're taking on odd hours of the night, dealing with strangers, folks puking in your cars, beating the hell out of you. Minimum wage. That shouldn't even be part of the argument. But over and over again in every city, they are passing legislation to bring drivers rates up to be comparable with minimum wage, which really shows how low drivers were getting paid. That if you can bring their rates up so that they're earning minimum wage, it'll actually be a damn increase to their earnings. Now, just the way I'm describing that, I want you to hear Uber and Lyft's response because this really pissed me the fuck off. Both companies have sharply criticized the report saying researchers have overestimated the cost of being a driver. Now, there was a, re a report said on how much drivers should make. That's where the dollar thirty nine and all that shit came from. Uber and Lyft are suggesting that that report has in basically did not take into proper account the cost of being a driver. They're saying that dollar forty, dollar thirty nine cents a mile. You're overstating the actual expenses it takes to be a driver. As if Uber and Lyft knows what the expenses are of being a driver. How many of us have seen these $3 trips? Trip that they want you to go 100 miles with a passenger. They're paying you $70. Not even taking in consideration you got to drive all the way back at your own expense. Before the government got involved, is there anybody that believes Uber or Lyft were properly estimating the expenses that drivers deal with? They're the last entity that should be telling anyone that someone else does not know the actual expenses of what it takes to be a driver. If they knew a $5 minimum per trip would not even be something to argue about. A dollar a mile, dollar twenty, dollar thirty, dollar forty would not be something to argue about. If Uber or Lyft knew what it took as a driver to cover expenses, Nobody would be earning 60 or 70 cents per mile. They make the worst messenger on this shit. And that's what the politicians should show up and bring up. When they say, well, you're overstating the expenses of drivers, they should actually present them with some actual trips that Uber and Lyft gave to drivers and ask them, here's your numbers before the government got involved. You tell me you know what the proper expenses of a driver are when you're giving this guy $2 and some cent for this trip that he got to drive six or seven miles to pick the passenger up? Or here's a 200-mile trip where you're giving the driver 80 bucks? You're telling me you know how much it costs to be a driver and we don't with this shit? This is pretty easy to dispel. But it does make me, it does lead me to be upset at least to hear them say that the state making these proposals for these wage changes don't know how much drivers require in expenses when they're giving us these bullshit trips. Last but not least, I want you to hear this from the aspect of Governor Tim Walz because he is the one that ultimately has to sign this bill. Remember we talked about Mayor Fry in Minneapolis who continued vetoing increases for drivers until they got the lower uh, level politicians to pass the bill so strongly that his veto couldn't take it down. Mayor Fry is not on the side of drivers. 
Listen to this, and you might think the same of Governor Tim Walz. The bill gives Fatah a chance to make good on a promise he made to drivers to pass a bill that Governor Tim Walz will sign into law. Fatah told drivers last year that Walz had committed to signing the bill last year, though Tim Walz's office says he made no such commitment. Governor Walsh is not on your side. If you're a rideshare driver, just like with Mayor Fry of Minneapolis, Governor Walsh of the state of Minnesota is not on your side either. Now, here's the background story on this. They had came up with decent wages for drivers last year. Once again, the lower level politicians had agreed to give drivers an increase. Governor Tim Walsh, just like Mayor Fry, vetoed it. In fact, with Governor Tim Walsh, this was the first veto of his entire gubernatorial career. Had never vetoed any damn thing else, which led yours truly to state, most likely Uber got in that payback. Oh, Uber got in their pockets. Uber has paid these folks off. Now, once again, after vetoing the bill to give drivers an increase, Governor Walsh pushed it out for a whole fucking year stated that come back with something that's more fair for Uber and Lyft and we'll discuss it next year. So when he vetoes this shit, you're stuck at the crappy wages you're getting for a whole year. It ain't like he says, listen, this is too much money to give drivers. Go back and rehash something and I'll meet with you next week. It's next year. So when he, when he vetoes it, you're out of luck for a long time. So... He suggested, talking about Tim Walsh, told the lower level politicians, come up with something that's more fair for Uber and Lyft, which is bullshit to begin with. And for Todd, a senator there that we've been talking about, actually came up with better numbers. Apparently, he states that he talked to Tim Walsh, presented the new numbers, and Tim Walsh was like, okay, that's low enough, we'll sign that. Well, now that that year is almost expiring, it's time to do this shit again. Tim Watts is like, I didn't commit to shit. You know why? Uber, Lyft, most likely are committing, are giving that dude money. They're in the pocketbook with that dude. They're in bed with that dude. So I'm not a big fan of Tim Walsh at all as the governor of Minnesota for you drivers out there. That dude is not your friend. He is not your friend. He is a friend of the ride sharing companies. Would not surprise me. If Minnesota residents, just like Minneapolis residents, drivers rather, have to go through the same fight with Governor Tim Walsh as Minneapolis drivers had to go through with Mayor Fry, meaning you got to get a veto proof majority to get around this dude who is likely corrupt, who is likely being paid by the rideshare companies. Otherwise, he's going to veto it again. If you don't get a veto-proof majority, there's a good chance Tim Walsh, the governor of Minnesota, is going to come up with some reason or another to suggest it's still unfair to Uber and Lyft. Because at the end of the day, Uber and Lyft believe that any raise to drivers at all is unfair to them. They're not interested in giving you one cent more. So we'll see how it comes. What do you guys think? Do you think there's a chance Tim Walsh is going to veto this shit again? Let your boy know in the comments. Shout out to the drivers in Minnesota. Keep up the good work. Stay unified. Stay in the fight. Get that bag. It's your boy Tim. Feel free to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.